Hey everybody, I'm back with another video and I wanted to show you a new updated version of my Frank Robinson collection. I have last uh, did a video on this a little over two years ago. It doesn't even have quite 200 views, so I'm going to take that one down and put this one up as I've had a few, quite a few additions in the last couple of years. So Frank Robinson is a guy who I think sometimes doesn't get the, uh, the credit he's due. A fantastic player, 12-time All-Star, 2-time MVP both once in the American and once in the National League, and the 66 Triple Crown winner. Also was a, uh, won multiple World Series and then was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1982. Finished with over 500 home runs. Uh, I think he was just like maybe a little less than 60 hits short of 200 hits as well. So just a fantastic playing career for a guy who was a, a just tremendous athlete. So he did come from uh, Oakland's famed Clemens High School where he played basketball with uh, Bill Russell and then was also on the baseball team with a couple of good ball players and uh, Kurt Flood and Veda Pinson, uh, teammates of his. So he's got a, a really interesting backstory if you want to look into it uh, even before he broke into the major leagues. So starting up here with the card uh, is 1957 Topps Rookie. Then on to a couple cards that he had in 58. Cool colors on those 58s, like those, uh, the All-Star, Sport All-Star from that year. And one of my favorite cards of his, his 59 tops. And a couple cards from 1960. And moving on to 61 with this uh, Reds Heavy Artillery that he shared with his old former teammate in high school, Veda Pinson. And the 61, that 61 All-Star is a short print and very tough. Sixty-two stamp. That's cool because it's got the whole it's got the uh, top stamp album offer on it as well. Only 10 cents for that. Nice. His uh 61 home runs leader, that's a 62 card. It's got Cepeda and Willie Mays on it as well. And his 62 card is very tough itself. I only have it as a 5. Very ex very expensive in higher grades. And then in 63, he's on a couple of the uh, the National League leaders cards here. This one's got Stan Usual and Hank Aaron on it. And this is one of my faves right here. This one down here, it's got Hank Aaron, uh, Willie Mays, Orlando Cepeda, Ernie Banks. So pretty good company there. And just his regular 63, very sharp. And then his 63 tops peel off in a nice grade. Uh, this one's very rare, the 64 Tops Tattoo. There's only six of these graded. Uh, there's three of them that are a good two. There's just this one that's uh, poor that I have here, and then a couple that are graded authentic. So very rare, tough to come by. The 64 and 65 cards look very similar with that stance of his. His 67 uh, Tops Embossed. And then on to 66, where he's now a member of the Orioles, uh, Triple Crown and MVP that year. Uh, his 66 League Leaders card uh, shows him in his Reds uniform still. And he's got his Reds uniform there on that card, although it does show him in the corner as a member of the Orioles. And oddly enough, his 66 Tops rub off shows him as a Cincinnati Red. So same year, probably could have got this maybe even in the same pack, I don't know. Uh, on to 67 where he now is in full Oriole gear. The, the champs there with the Hank Bauer, Brooks Robinson, and Frank Robinson card. The number one card in that year set. And an all checklist card from that year. And then because 66 was his triple crown year, he's got quite a few of the uh, league leaders. He's in all three of the cards there for batting RBIs and down here for home runs. Let me focus on this. The 68 Atlantic Play Ball, very rare card, uh, just a few of these graded. Uh, I think there's three graded as an excellent mint six. Uh, so this is, there's none higher than this. And then there's two that are graded, a good two, and one that's authentic. So only six of these ever graded. And uh, the 68 game piece, uh, you see in the Heritage now, they've come out with these game pieces again. They're pretty cool. That's the original deal right there. Then a couple of league leader cards from 68. And then two variations of this checklist. One of them, the, the cap is kind of just underneath the lip of that circle. And the second one on the right, it's below it. The backs are a little bar variant too, just in the shading. Uh, one has got a, more of a tan, one's got a whiter back. 
And then on to his uh, all-star card and regular card from 68. And he did another Bird Belters card here with Brooks Robinson. Then on to some 69s. Globe Imports, Major League Photo Stamp. Here's his regular 69. Uh, it's just, uh, it is off-center, clearly off-center, but sharp corners and stuff. I just never got around to getting a new one. I'm, I'm content with it being OC. And then uh, the decals. On to the 1970s with this Kellogg's. Uh, Jim Mint, Milton Bradley card, and the case was unfortunately cracked on delivery. And then in 1970, uh, two cards again, they did that all-star set again. And then that's a high number, the number 700. That 70 Frank Robinson is very sharp, uh, very high end for an Airmint 7. Then his uh, Dell team stamp, and then his Kellogg's. On to 71, and on the left you can see that 71 was another high numbered at uh, 640. Then another tough one, that 71 tops tattoo. Uh, 72 Milton Bradley, just an Airman 7, but those are, are perforated. You had, to, you had to break those out yourself, so it's difficult to get those high graded. One of my favorite images of Frank Robbins is, is this 1962 Puerto Rican League sticker, uh, my, primarily just because that cheesy mustache that he's got. Super cool. And then on to just this regular 72 tops. He was in the league leaders. Then there he is, his last Orioles card. And we see him in the high-numbered uh, traded set. That's a nice one at an Air Mint Mid 8. He's traded to the uh, LA Dodgers. And then it shows him in that uh, Topps candy lid in 73. 73, it says he's a California Angel because he was uh, he joined the Angels, but it still shows him in his Dodgers uniform there. And then down in 74, we see him finally in his Angels uniform there with the Topps, or excuse me, the uh, the top stamps from 74 there's just a authentic panel with Jim Palmer next to him and then a higher graded one right there at an airman 8 it's regular 74 and on to 75 this is the last year he was issued a card and he also the first year he became the uh, he actually became the first african-american manager in the major leagues for the Indians as a player coach so I've got a run of his 75 here uh, both in the regular and the mini and then a couple uh, Coaching card, 76 was the last year he played, so he did have a managerial card that year, and then 77 a managerial card as well. And then here, this 99, it was a, a Hillshire Farms, did a, a promotional, that's on-card autograph, so cool. I like this card because it shows his career stats on the back too. And then just a couple coins, uh, armored coin from 59 in good grade, a couple Salata coins from 62 and 68, or excuse me, 62 and 63. Then a 64 All-Star coin, 69 Major League Player Association pin, that's rare. And an Airman 7. And then a 71 Tops coin. I want to finish up by showing a little bit more of some oddball uh, larger items. Starting here with this 57 uh, Swift Meets. This is his rookie year card. Uh, really cool. There's about 36 of these graded, so not, not the rarest in the world, but still really sweet. Uh, you could have punched that out and... Made a little pop-up player of, of Frank there. It's, done, it's it's from 57, so there's a little discoloration around the edges, but otherwise that thing is in great shape. Uh, fair grade at an Airman 7. And then in 62 they did the Topps box. This one's in really, uh, it's got really good eye appeal for for a very good to excellent 4. It's probably because the centering is not, not nice on this, which is common for those 62 Topps box. On to 64 with his giant card. Uh, just a really cool imagery on these. These aren't hard to come by, but just really cool imagery. And then uh, here, this 1970 giant uh, super, excuse me, is a, is a short print. And this is probably the rarest piece that I have. This uh, 71 Mattel Instant Replay. There's only uh, two of these that have ever been graded. And, and PSA doesn't even grade these anymore. I don't think they have this, this style of case. So they won't grade these. Uh, this is front and back. It's got an image. There's a couple variations on this. So there's only two of these that have ever been graded. There's a near mint seven, and this is a near mint eight. So it's the highest of the two. Uh, you can also could also get this in the disc would have been black, and there would have been an image on the front, like a little cardboard image, and then then blank on the back with just the black. But this is, a, I think, a cooler variation with a double sided. Yeah. So if you're looking for the uh, the best uh, 1971 Mattel instant replay, there it is. And then here, I uh, love these, love these game day, uh, these uh, Cooperstown issued 1982 when he was inducted. 
on card autograph, or excuse me, on it's an envelope, so on envelope autograph of Frank Robinson. Pretty cool. And then just the last thing I wanted to show was this Frank Robinson Milk Duds card. That's got excellent eye appeal for a very uh, good to excellent four. But you see there's a, a little surface blemish there that's, that's holding that one back. But once again, everybody, I wanted to show you guys uh, my nice Frank Robinson collection. An awesome player. Once again, everybody, I do appreciate your posts and comments below, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks.